Hello, and welcome to our countdown of the top 10 mobsters of all time. This list includes the most notorious, powerful, and feared mobsters in history. These famous criminals have left an indelible mark on the world of organized crime, and their legacies continue to be studied and debated to this day. So, let's get straight to it. Number 10, Sam Giancana. As the head of the Chicago outfit, also known as the Chicago Mafia, Giancana rose to power in the 1950s and 60s and was involved in illegal activities such as gambling, labor racketeering, and political corruption. He controlled a significant portion of the illegal activities in Chicago and had a vast network of political and law enforcement connections. Giancana was also known for his alliance with the CIA and his involvement in political plots, including a failed attempt to assassinate Fidel Castro. Giancana's reign came to an end in 1975 when he was assassinated in his Oak Park home. His death remains unsolved to this day. Number 9, Joe Bonanno. As the head of the Bonanno crime family in New York City, Joe Bonanno, also known as Joe Bananas, was one of the most powerful mobsters of the 20th century. He was a key player in the National Crime Syndicate and controlled a vast criminal empire that stretched from coast to coast. He was known for his cunning and intelligence and was able to maintain a low profile, avoiding the spotlight that many of his contemporaries craved. He was also known for his ability to keep the Bonanno family out of the public eye and for his avoidance of high-profile criminal activities. Bonanno retired from active crime in the 1970s and lived out his days in relative obscurity. He died in 2002 in Arizona. Number 8, Frank Costello. A powerful mob boss in New York City, Frank Costello was involved in illegal activities such as gambling, labor racketeering, and political corruption. He was known as the Prime Minister of the Underworld and his influence in the New York City criminal underworld was unmatched. He rose to power in the 1920s and 30s, and his criminal empire stretched across the country. He controlled a significant portion of the illegal activities in New York City and had a vast network of political and law enforcement connections. He was also known for his ability to evade prosecution for many years and for his control of the city's illegal numbers game. Costello's reign came to an end in the 1950s when he was shot by rival gangster Vincent the Chin Giganti in his own apartment. Despite being shot in the head, Costello survived the attack and decided to retire from the criminal underworld. He died in 1973 due to natural causes. Number 7, Meyer Lansky. Known as the mob's accountant, Meyer Lansky was a major organizer of the National Crime Syndicate and was involved in illegal activities such as gambling, loan sharking, and drug trafficking. He was a key player in the American Mafia and helped to shape the modern criminal landscape. He was known for his financial acumen and his ability to launder money and hide profits from law enforcement. Lansky was also a key player in the development of Las Vegas, and had a hand in many of the biggest casinos of the time, such as the Flamingo and the Sands. He was also involved in the development of Cuba's casino industry and had close ties to the ruling regime of Fulgencio Batista. Lansky's criminal empire stretched across the United States and had international connections, he died in 1983 in Miami Beach, Florida, never having been convicted of any major crime. Number 6, Carlo Gambino. As the head of the Gambino crime family in New York City, Carlo Gambino was one of the most powerful mobsters of the 20th century. He controlled a vast criminal empire that stretched from coast to coast and was known for his ruthless tactics and cunning business acumen. He rose to power in the 1950s, after the murder of Albert Anastasia, and his criminal empire stretched across the country. He controlled multiple illegal enterprises such as labor racketeering, drug trafficking, extortion, and gambling. He also had connections to politicians and law enforcement officials, which helped him evade prosecution for many years. Carlo Gambino was known for his low-key approach and his ability to avoid the spotlight, earning him the nickname, The Silent Don. He died of natural causes in 1976 at his home in Staten Island, New York, while he was still the head of the Gambino crime family. He is also considered to be the main figure from which Mario Puzo got inspiration to develop the character of Vito Corleone in The Godfather. Number 5, Bugsy Siegel. One of the founders of the American Mafia, Bugsy Siegel was a notorious gangster who was heavily involved in the development of Las Vegas. 
He was known for his ostentatious lifestyle and his role in shaping the modern American gambling industry. He rose to power in the 1920s and 30s and was a key player in the development of the National Crime Syndicate. He was also a key player in the development of Las Vegas and was instrumental in the construction of the Flamingo Hotel, which is considered the first luxury hotel and casino on the Las Vegas Strip. Despite the success of the Flamingo, Siegel's mismanagement of the project led to significant financial losses for the mob. His reign came to an end in 1947, when he was assassinated in his Beverly Hills home. His death remains unsolved to this day. Number 4, Vito Genovese. Vito Genovese, known as Don Vito, was the head of the Genovese crime family in New York City during the mid-20th century. He was involved in illegal activities such as gambling, drug trafficking, and labor racketeering. He was a key player in the National Crime Syndicate and his influence in the New York City criminal underworld was unmatched. Genovese rose to power in the 1930s and 40s, and his criminal empire stretched across the country. He was known for his ruthless tactics and his ability to eliminate rivals, earning him the nickname, the Boss of Bosses. He was also involved in multiple high-profile murder cases, including the killing of a rival mobster, and was a suspect in the death of a government witness. Genovese's reign came to an end in the 1960s, when he was convicted of drug trafficking and sentenced to 15 years in prison. He died in prison in 1969 while serving his sentence. Number 3, Lucky Luciano. Lucky Luciano, born Salvatore Lucania, was a notorious American gangster, considered the father of modern organized crime in America. He was a major player in the development of the National Crime Syndicate in the 1930s and 40s and played a key role in shaping the modern American mafia, as he was the first mob boss to do business with and accept non-Italians into the crime family, an action for which he was criticized heavily by fellow oldhead mobsters and mob bosses. Luciano rose to power in the 1920s and 30s and was instrumental in the formation of the National Crime Syndicate, which brought all the major crime families together under one umbrella organization. This allowed the different criminal groups to cooperate and divide the territories, which helped to reduce the level of violence and increase their profits. He was also known for his role in creating a national commission, which helped to resolve conflicts between rival mob families and set rules for criminal activities. Luciano was also involved in various illegal activities, such as bootlegging, gambling, and prostitution. He was known for his intelligence and strategic thinking, and his ability to maintain control over his criminal empire despite numerous attempts to bring him down. He was also known for his ability to avoid prosecution for many years. Luciano's reign came to an end when he was convicted of compulsory prostitution and sentenced to 30 to 50 years in prison. He was released from prison in 1946 due to his cooperation with the American government during World War II and was subsequently deported to Italy. He died in 1962 in Naples, Italy, while living in exile. Luciano's legacy continues to be studied and debated and his impact on the world of organized crime and American culture is undeniable. Number 2, John Gotti. John Gotti, also known as the Teflon Don, was a notorious American gangster and the head of the Gambino crime family in New York City during the 1980s and 1990s. He rose to power in the early 1980s, after the murder of Paul Castellano, the previous boss of the Gambino family. Gotti was known for his flamboyant style, his charismatic personality and his ability to win the loyalty of his followers. He was also known for his involvement in high-profile criminal cases and for his public image as a modern-day Robin Hood. Gotti was known for his ability to evade prosecution for many years, and his acquittal in several high-profile trials earned him the nickname, the Teflon Don. Despite his ability to evade prosecution for many years, Gotti's reign came to an end in the 1990s, when he was finally convicted of multiple criminal charges, including racketeering, extortion, and multiple murders. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole and he died in prison in 2002. Number 1, Al Capone. Alphonse Gabriel Capone, also known as Scarface, was a notorious American gangster during the 1920s and early 1930s. He was the head of the Chicago outfit, which controlled illegal activities such as bootlegging, gambling, and prostitution in the Chicago area. 
He rose to power during the Prohibition era and his criminal empire was said to have been worth around $100 million, which is around $1.5 billion in today's money. Capone was known for his exuberant lifestyle and his ability to evade prosecution for many years, using his wealth and political connections to bribe law enforcement and government officials. He was also known for his use of violence and intimidation to control the criminal underworld in Chicago. He was involved in multiple high-profile murders and his criminal empire was responsible for a significant amount of violence and corruption in the city. Despite his ability to evade prosecution for many years, Al Capone's reign came to an end in the 1930s when he was finally convicted of tax evasion and sentenced to 11 years in prison. He served his sentence in the federal penitentiary in Atlanta, and later at the Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. Capone was released from prison in 1939 due to his deteriorating health and he died in 1947 at age 48 due to natural causes. His legacy continues to be studied and debated, and his impact on the world of organized crime and American culture is undeniable. Well, there you have it. These are the top 10 mobsters of all time. These notorious criminals have left an indelible mark on the world of organized crime, and their legacies continue to be studied and debated to this day. They each had their own unique stories and styles, but all of them had one thing in common, a ruthless desire for power and control. Their impact on society was immense, as they controlled illegal activities that led to violence, corruption, and harm to innocent people. They also had a profound impact on American culture, from the way we think about crime and criminals, to the way we portray them in popular media. If you reached this far, be sure to subscribe and like the video for more top 10 lists. Also, be sure to leave a comment with your own list and with your thoughts on our list. We want to read what you think. Thank you for watching, and until next time.